Hello everyone, welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue to discuss the topic on amplifier. I'm still at Class A amplifier. This video, I'm going to discuss what is AC and also DC load line and what are the roles that this AC and DC load line will affect the performance of an amplifier. This will be the part three series discussion on amplifier. So if you're keen to know more about amplifier, please take a look on the playlist under the description. Over there, you will be able to find a series of discussion on amplifier, not only on class A, but the rest of the class on the amplifier. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and also the subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Guys, feel free to give me comment, also suggest what topic that you guys are keen so that the quality of this channel can be further improved. Once again, thank you so much for your strong support. Let's understand what is actually a AC and DC look like. Okay, so in this diagram here, you can see both the AC, okay, which is in green, and also the DC look like, which is in red. Okay, so what is actually this look like? Okay, the Q point of a transistor is a steady state operating condition for DC and also AC operation. The Q point on both DC and AC load line intersect at the same Q point. So over here, you can see that right at the middle. Okay, so basically this will be the point that will be common to both AC and also DC. As you can see from this diagram here, both the AC and also DC, they actually intersect at this common point. Okay, so let's take a close look on this AC and DC load line. So from here, okay, we can actually classify two important parameters. One will be saturation, okay, which means that anything more than this, okay, the transistor will saturate. Okay, so therefore, we have this saturation point. We do not want anything more than this point, which means that IC, okay, the, the value of IC, if it's more than this point, there will be a strong chances that the transistor will be saturation. So this will be the point that we classify as saturation. Over here, you will see that this is what we mean by cut off. Okay, so anything when VCE is more than this point, okay, which means that they fall onto the right hand side, they actually fall under cut off. Okay, once they are at cut off, which means that the transistor is not biased at all, and hence the transistor will not be able to operate at the optimum performance. So basically, in short, okay, so basically, we have this saturation region to avoid, and we also have this cutoff region that we want to avoid. Based on what I have discussed earlier on, okay, the region of saturation and also the region of cutoff. So hence, typically, we have this maximum point and also the minimum point for both the saturation and cutoff. So which means that anything more than that, okay, I cannot guarantee the performance of the transistor because somehow they may be either saturate or cut off. So hence, it's important to keep the point within this area from Q1 to Q2, nothing more than Q1 or Q2. Let's take a closer look on this diagram in order to understand better. Okay, firstly, Okay, let's understand here. So basically for this ICQ, which is mean that at this point here, okay, and also BCEQ, okay, which means that at these two regions here, you can see that they actually represent no signal collector current, okay, which means that the collector current is equal to zero. You can see here, at this Q point here, at this three point, you can see that the collector current is actually at zero. And also the voltage between collector and emitter is also at zero. So if you trace it here, so again, you can see that these three points, okay, they, the voltage between the collector and emitter, they are also zero. Okay, so let's start by defining this first. Okay, let's understand a little bit more. 
So basically, I actually apply a sine wave onto the base of a transistor. When I actually apply a sine wave to the base of a transistor, okay, so this will be the collector current. Okay, so when sine wave is actually applied to the base of the transistor, okay, the current at the base of the transistor, they actually also will increase proportional. So therefore, as for the current for the collector, they basically govern by this equation. So when my IB increase, my IC also increase. So over here, this will be my IB and this will be my IC. When they actually bias by this transistor, they actually provide a gain by this beta here. So basically, this is how I arrive at this waveform at the collector current. I will come to the rest later on. When signal is applied, okay, the Q point shift to Q1, okay, which means that this Q point, they will shift to Q1. As you can see from here, they actually start from here, Q, and then they actually move to Q1. So when they move to Q1, the output current increase to IC max, which means that at this point, this is the maximum collector current. When the input of the base here, when they actually increase to this point, the collector also increase proportionally. So at this point, you can see that the current at the collector will be the maximum. As I mentioned earlier on, anything more than that, they will be actually saturated. So therefore, this will be the IC max as illustrated over here. And similar, the collector emitter voltage decrease to BCE mean. Okay, so if you trace this thing here, you can see that for BCE, they are actually at the minimum point. So this point here, you can see that for IC, they basically will be in the middle. Okay, and then the, the BCE is also at the middle, which means that no collector current and also no voltage in between the collector and also emitter. So when the signal actually move from Q point to Q1, you can see over here, the current also move from zero point all the way to the maximum, which is IC max. As for VCE, they become minimum. As you can see from here, they shift from zero point voltage at the between the emitter and also collector is actually zero. So basically, when they actually move to over here, okay. So what happened here is because they actually governed by this equation. Okay, so what happened here is basically you can see that when IC is at maximum, which means that this is a very big number. Okay, you can see that VCE is equal to VCC minus a very big number, let's say. And hence VCE will be at the minimum number. So once this IC is max, my VCE will be minimum. And therefore, this is the outcome when they actually shift from Q to Q1. Next. Okay, when the Q point shift from Q1 to Q2, okay, which means that from this Q1 to Q2, okay, as you can see that the signal actually shift from Q1 to Q2. Okay, what happened here is basically the output current will be decreased to IC minimum. Okay, so basically from here you can see that this point here will be the IC minimum. And similarly, the collector emitter voltage will increase to VCE max. So over here, if you trace it here, Okay, you can see that they basically reach the VCE max. Okay, again, it's governed by this equation. Okay, I guess you will be able to understand this. Okay, because the current will be at a minimum and hence my VCE will be at the maximum. Next, okay, when the Q point shift from Q2 to Q, okay, which means that now from this point here, they shift from the Q2 to Q, okay, they will be back at the original, which means that there won't be any output current Okay, because the collector current is again at a zero point and also the collector emitter voltage also will become zero point. So with this, I guess you have the idea how does the AC look like and also the DC look like. Okay, mainly for this will be mainly on the AC look like affect the performance of a transistor. Let's do a quick conclusion. Okay, AC input signal that is applied should not be very large. Remember, if it's very large, it will be saturated, okay, which can badly affect the instantaneous operation point or Q point and would drive the transistor to saturation 
or cut off. Okay, if they are very large, okay, you know that when the signal can be very large, what happens is basically from here, imagine that if it's very large, okay, it can be in a saturation and it can be also at the cut off. So this is what you mean over here for this point here. So it's very important okay, that we keep this IC within the Q1 to Q2 zone. Okay, we do not want them to exceed the Q1 and Q2 point. Hence, this is very important. Okay, we also know that IC is actually inverse proportional to VCE. As you can see from this equation, which I have described earlier on, Okay, because as IC increase, VCE increase and vice versa, which means that IC increase, my VCE actually decrease. Also, AC input voltage, when both positive, okay, this actually causes the IC to increase. And when negative, this actually causes the IC to decrease. All this is the reason behind this 180 degree phase shift between the input and output of the amplifier circuit. In another word, AC input and output voltage can be said to be out of phase by 180 degree. Only common emitter amplifier produce 180 degree phase shift. Okay, with this, I would like to end my discussion on class A amplifier.